Hello friends, today I am going to discuss questions and answers with you in the cardiopulmonary physiotherapy. To total 5 questions, I am going to discuss with the answer with you all. So let's see the first question. What is breathing re-education? Now try to understand, breathing re-education means learning the breathing control and to pace the activities that are important. Re-educating, that means educating again or correcting the dysfunctional breathing pattern okay, by giving different exercises. That is called your breathing re-education program. Now, the beneficial effects of this breathing re-education are it decreases the respiratory rate, it decreases the breathlessness during the exercise, it increases the tidal volume, it increases the oxygen saturation. Now, what are the techniques that can be used for the breathing re-education? So, mainly there are four techniques. The technique number one is your first sleep breathing exercise. Second is your diaphragmatic breathing exercise. The third one, paced breathing with the exercise. And the fourth one is exhale with effort. So, this is one about the breathing re-education. Let us see the second question. What is winning off from the ventilator? Now, winning from the mechanical ventilator is the process of withdrawing the patient from mechanical ventilatory support in a staged manner, stepwise manner. Now, patients who require ventilator for a short term do not require extensive winning program. For example, the patient who is kept on a ventilator post-operatively because of the effects of anesthesia. For them, we, we don't require uh, you know, a long ventilatory winning procedure. Now, true winning is required in a patient whom there is a respiratory muscles weakness and the respiratory muscles are detrained. And the goal of winning program is to facilitate the strength and endurance of the respiratory muscles that is needed to sustain the spontaneous ventilation. This is the main role performed by the physiotherapist in the intensive care unit and uh, we help to increase the strength of the respiratory muscles and uh, we facilitate and inhibit many muscles and uh, that's how we can help the patient to be off from the ventilator. The third question, what are the aseptic precautions to be followed in the intensive care unit? So there are around six to seven aseptic precautions which you have to follow. The first one is proper hand wash. It is simple but very effective method. Second, protective clothing. So, which includes your cap, floaters, gown, masks, etc. To prevent yourself from the infection and to prevent patient or other individuals, if you have any infections, infection may spread from you as well. So, it is for basically protective purposes. The third one, take appropriate aseptic measure while suctioning. Next, if you are suffering from any infection, acute infection, then you must not enter the intensive care unit only. Otherwise, your immunity will be low, you may receive any infection. And at the same time, uh, acute infection is present in you, you may become a source of infection for the other patient. Next, use sterilizer before and after treating the patient. And uh, even uh, you can apply the uh, antiseptic solution or the sterlium isopropyl alcohol solution to the uh, diaphragm of your stethoscope when you uh, do the auscultation from one patient to another patient. And last point that is wash your hand properly with disinfectant every time you exit from the intensive care unit. So these are the aseptic precautions to be followed in the ICU. The fourth point, fourth question, what is rib springing? Now rib springing is a compressive technique that is applied gradually by the physiotherapist during the expiration with added overpressure, very important, at the end of expiration. The compression is then removed suddenly and this quick release will encourage for the deep inspiration. And this is a regress technique used by the cardiopulmonary physiotherapist to stimulate the deeper inspiration which both increases the lung volume and promotes the movement of secretions from the bottom of the lung into the larger airways where they can be easily cupped up or it can be suctioned out effectively. So very important is uh, to know about the rib springing technique. And the last question, what is mucociliary excavator? Now try to understand 
You must have seen the escalator in the different mall, railway station, airport, etc. So escalator takes you from one place to the another place. Similarly, the bronchial wall epithelium, it is lined with the microscopic hair-like structure called as a cilia, which are surrounded by a fur, uh, film of fluid called solia. Now, this cilia is very, very much mobile and continuously it is producing a beating motion which pushes the secretions from the periphery to the central airway via the trachea to the throat where it can be swallowed or removed. Hence it is termed as a escalator. So cilia, I, I give an example, it's like a crop in a farm, it moves from the direction from where the air is coming and it is going to the opposite side. So cilia function is very very important and cilia are the structures which acts like a mucociliary escalator and allow the mucus to come up to the more central airways in the trachea so that it can be removed it maybe by coughing, huffing or by doing the suctioning. So uh, if the cilia is paralyzed, okay, let's suppose a person who is doing the smoking, so what will happen once uh, the cilia is paralyzed, it will take a time for its recovery. So till that time, okay, uh, the ciliary movement will be affected and whatever the secretions are present or getting produced, it will be accumulated in the chest itself. So function of the cilia is very very essential. So thank you very much. I hope these five questions and answers will give you some idea about the cardiopulmonary physiotherapy. You can uh, stay in touch with me. Thank you very much.